Hello, UBC. It is so good to be with you this morning. I appreciate the opportunity and uh, what a great honor uh, to be invited to come back and to speak with you again. Uh, for those of you who don't know me or remember me, my name is Keith Garner and I am currently serving as the director for Asia Pacific Media here in Manila. And uh, we, we are so grateful because um, UBC partners with us and supports uh, our ministry and we want to thank you for your support. And uh, without your support, we wouldn't be able to be uh, accomplish what it is that God has called us to do here in the Philippines and all across the Asia Pacific. So, you know, as you know, the, the pandemic has caused chaos in everybody's ministry, but it's actually been, uh, we've been very blessed through it all. And our, and, our, and our reach has been able to increase and our audience has increased and God has been faithful in providing because of faithful giving uh, through partners like you. And so we wanna thank you uh, for partnering with us. And through that partnership, we've been able to train nearly 40,000 people through our webinars last year. Uh, we've been able to train pastors in Malaysia. Uh, we are preparing now currently for a, a training session for all the pastors in the Assemblies of God in Japan. And also coming up in March, we have our annual Asia Institute for Media and Ministry, uh, where we're gonna be doing an, a week-long intensive on uh, live streaming for churches. And none of this is possible without, without faithful support. And so we want to thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to come and to share with you this morning God's Word. And so this morning the title of our message is, What Master Do You Desire? Now I have been given the topic of dead to sin, alive in Christ, and slave to righteousness from Romans chapter 6. Now this chapter is very rich in theological content. But do not let that thought intimidate you. This is really a chapter about how Christians are to live their lives. And I am going to use verse 16 as the foundation of this message. And I'm going to be reading from the, the, the Living Bible uh, translation on this. So verse 16 says of Romans chapter 6 from the Living Bible, Don't you realize that you can choose your own master? Now, who we choose to be our master really comes down to what we desire. We all have things that we desire and want. Now, having desires is not a bad thing. Now, some desires should not be acted upon because they are unhealthy for us physically or unhealthy for us spiritually. But sometimes we can get into trouble because of the way we choose to satisfy some of those desires that we have. Now, as an example, I love lechon. And if I could, I would eat it all the time. But in honesty, it's not really good for my high blood pressure. So I do not indulge in eating lechon very often. But is there anything wrong with desiring lechon? Well, of course not. But for me, my overall health is a higher priority than enjoying lechon every day. So due to my desire to be healthy, I make a decision. I make a decision to eat. Uh, I make decisions as to what I eat and how much I eat and how often I eat lechon based upon my desire to be healthy. So the point should be obvious. I am choosing who my master is. I have two desires, to eat lechon and my other desire to be healthy. I choose my master based on the priority of my desire. Therefore, I serve my health by the decision I make about what I eat. Now, as Christians, we often ask the question, do you know Jesus or do you believe in God? As born-again believers, we heavily emphasize that we are saved by grace through faith. That if we believe with our heart and confess with our mouth, then we are saved. Now, I am convinced that that is true. But what does it mean to believe? A belief that saves has to mean more than just agreeing to some random factual statement. You know, the devil believes that God exists, but yet... He's not forgiven. So a saving belief has to be something more than a mental or a willful acknowledge, acknowledgement of a fact. 
So simply acknowledging God's existence does not save us. Believing that the Bible is the Word of God does not save us. Even believing that Christ died on the cross does not save us. And did you realize, do you understand, that even reciting a sinner's prayer does not save us? So we have to ask the question, what saves us? Well, we are saved when we accept the truth that God exists and that He is the rightful master of our lives. When we believe that we have sinned against Him and when we believe that God loves us and that He loves us so much that He sent His Son Jesus to die for us. When we believe that He alone is the source of our salvation and therefore He alone is deserving and He alone truly is our Master, then we must desire to submit, to honor, and to serve Him. Now it's sad, but it's very true that there is a lot of people who are just simply religious. Uh, there are a lot of people who claim that they believe in God. They even claim that they might even be a Christian. But all that they really have is a truth claim. They have a truth claim, but they really don't have anything that they treasure. They make a truth claim, but they don't have a treasure. They have a truth claim, but they do not even cherish Christ. You see, Christianity is not just about having a correct theology about who Jesus is or having a correct theology about His work. You see, Christianity is about desiring to know, to experience, to honor, and obey Jesus, the Savior of our soul. Now, not having the desire to know, experience, honor, and obey Christ is what leads to this crazy idea that Paul starts off with here in Romans chapter 6. So again, I'm going to read from the Living Bible translation of Romans chapter 6, verse 1. And it says, Well then, shall we keep on sinning so that God can keep on showing us more and more kindness and forgiveness? Now, whoever is making this statement is making a truth claim that they are a Christ follower. But they are also showing a lack of desire to experience a desire to experience and honor Him. They, they might like the way that Jesus sounds. You know, He sounds kind. He sounds approachable. They like the idea of salvation being a free gift. They like the thought that Jesus will forgive us of all of our wrongdoing if we just ask for forgiveness. But there is no desire or respect for Jesus Himself. See, Christ is not a treasure to them. All He is is an easy escape plan. So if Jesus gave His life to offer us the gift of salvation, then how disrespectful is it for us to accept that gift, but then to continue to do the things that He died to save us from? You know, let me just use this as an example here. So just for a moment, let's imagine that you have made some bad decisions in your life and you've had to borrow money but you weren't able to pay that money. So you borrowed more money from somebody else to pay off the first loan. And the cycle repeats itself and you kept doing this until you were drowning in debt. And I come along and I see your situation and I am moved with compassion. And so I give you one billion pesos and I tell you to pay off your debts, but to live wisely and to take care of your family. Would you with one billion pesos be set for life? Now imagine three years later, you see me again and you ask me for another 1 billion pesos because you had made the same decisions as you had before. That would be offensive to me because you did not respect me or the gift that I gave you. But see, this is exactly what Christ has done. He has paid our debt so that we might have life and to have it more abundantly. And in Him, we have every spiritual blessing. How offensive is it that for us to continue to do everything that we were doing after we've accepted His gift of salvation? 
friends, it shouldn't be like that. The only reason that we, uh, that the, the only reason that would be is because we love our sin more than we love Jesus. We desire to keep doing what we want over desiring to love, honor, and serve Jesus as our master. You know, another reason it should not be like that is because sin no longer has the power to master us. Because when Christ died, we died with him. And because Christ mastered sin, we have died to sin. Sin has no mastery over us. The only reason that we sin now as believers is because we act on our desire, our desire to do that. Romans chapter 6, verse 2 through 11 from the Living Bible. Of course not. Should we keep on sinning when we don't have to? For sin's power over us was broken when we became Christians and were baptized to become a part of Jesus Christ. Through his death, the power of your sinful nature was shattered. Your old sin-loving nature was buried with him by baptism when he died. And when God the Father with glorious power brought him back to life again, you were given his wonderful new life to enjoy. For you have become a part of him. And so you died with him, so to speak, when he died. And now you share his new life and shall rise as he did. Your old evil desires will nail your old evil desires were nailed to the cross with him. That part of you that loves to sin was crushed and fatally wounded, so that your sin-loving body is no longer under sin's control, no longer needs to be a slave to sin. For when you are dead into sin, you are freed from all of its allure and its power over you. And since your old sin-loving nature died with Christ, we know that you will share in His new life. Christ rose from the dead and will never die again. Death no longer has any power over Him. He died once for all to end sin's power. But now he lives forever in unbroken fellowship with God. So look upon your old sin nature as dead and unresponsive to sin. And instead, be alive to God, alert to him through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Jesus conquered sin and death by dying on the cross and rising again. Because of what he has done, we share in that victory when we accept his gift of salvation and honor Him with our life. You see, at salvation, our identity becomes united with Jesus. That means that when Jesus died, we died. When Jesus rose, we also rose with Him. And because He conquered death and He has mastered sin and death, sin has no mastery over us because Christ has defeated it. So now this is exactly the picture that water baptism dramatizes. You know, so imagine we're at a baptism pool, and before we step into the water, it represents us in our old sinful life. We then step into the water, and our, our identity joins with Christ. And when Jesus died, he was buried. So if we died with Christ, that means we also were buried. And so that is why we are immersed, or we're dunked, or we're buried in the water, because we died and we were buried with Christ. Now, the good thing is, is that Jesus rose again. Because if Jesus didn't rise again, your pastor was going to have to leave you under the water. But the good news is that Jesus rose again. And because he rose again, your pastor is able to bring you up out of the water. And just as Jesus is alive and rose again, you are now alive and risen again in Christ and alive in Christ. And meaning, this is what the meaning of being born is. We are now dead to sin, and it has no mastery over us. Now, going back to Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 14. Do not let sin control your puny body any longer. Do not give into its sinful desire. Do not let any part of your bodies become tools of wickedness to be used for sinning. But give yourselves completely to God, every part of you, for you are back from death and you want to be tools in the hands of God to be used for His good purpose. Sin need never again be your master. 
for you now are no longer tied to the law where sin enslaves you, but you are free under God's favor and mercy. Now, I want to paraphrase this, you know, just briefly. And basically, verse 12 and 13 basically say, do not be a slave to sin. And verse 14 tells us why. And that why is because sin will not be your master. Well, why will sin not be our master anymore? The answer is simple. Because Jesus is at work in us, and there is no way that sin can master us because Jesus is working in us. So let's continue on with verse 15 through 18. Does this mean that now we can go ahead and sin and not worry about it? For our salvation does not depend on our keeping the law, but on receiving God's grace. Of course not. Don't you realize that you can choose your own master? You can choose sin with death or else obedience with acquittal. The one to whom you offer yourself, he will take you and be your master and you will be his slave. Thank God that though once you chose to be slaves of sin, now you have obeyed with all your heart the teaching to which God has committed you. And now you are free from your old master's sin and you have become and you have become slaves to your new master, righteousness. What do sinners do? Well, sinners sin. You know, and so we as Christians should not be shocked when someone who has not experienced the wonderful saving grace of Jesus, when they do something sinful and do something awful, because they're not capable of doing anything else. They are a slave to sin. But, because, but now, because our identity is in Christ, We are free to either do that which is sinful or to do that which honors Christ. And it comes down to who we desire to please. Do we desire to please and to honor Christ? Or do we desire to please and to satisfy our own fleshly desires? Now, let's have a simple truth claim. Well, let's not have a simple truth claim without a treasure. Let's not just claim a truth. I pray that each of us would come to see the value and beauty of the person of Christ, that we would not just believe He exists, but we may also desire to know Him and experience Him and to honor Him with our lives. The question is, is who do we desire to be our master? You see, our faith is a wonderful and beautiful thing. And what Jesus has done for us is a wonderful and marvelous thing. And he offers us this gift of salvation. He has set us free from the bondage of sin, taking us and transforming us, making us a new creation, and a wonderful gift that he gives to us freely if we choose to accept it. But it's not just us giving some truth claim and saying, I'm a Christian or I believe. It comes to us really bowing our heart, our mind, and our will and living our our lives in a way that we desire to honor Him in everything that we say and which we do. We are saved by grace through faith. It is not of works. And so we do not do good things in order to to be saved. But there are good things that we do because we have been saved that are the proof that we have been saved, are the proof that we have been transformed, that are the proof that we have been changed, that are are the proof that we are a new creation in Christ. And so, friends, today, we are no longer bound as a slave to sin. We have died to sin as we identify, and we are now alive in Christ Jesus. And because we are alive in Christ Jesus, we are born new. And we can now freely choose to honor and to please and to serve Him with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. And what a beautiful thing. And so today, I just want to close here with this this final thought and these two final challenges. And the first would be this. Maybe you're here today and you're watching and listening to this. And maybe you can identify. Maybe you have just have a truth claim, but you don't have a treasure. Maybe you say, I'm a Christian, but you don't really cherish Christ. You really don't have a desire to honor Christ. And you really don't live your life any, through any day of the week, even thinking about what Christ would have you to do 
or how you could serve Christ or honor Christ, or even what Christ would want you to do in any given situation. If that is you, then I, would, I want to challenge you. Would you not just make a truth claim, but would you have a treasure? And would you put your hope in Jesus Christ today? And would you receive that salvation? And would you treasure Him? And would you live your life and strive to live your life in a way that pleases and honor Him? And my second challenge would be today is maybe you're listening today and you've never accepted the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want to give you that opportunity today. That God has loved us so much that even while we were still imperfect, even while we were still messed up, even when we were still doing things that He didn't approve of, that He loved us so much that He gave His Son Jesus to die on our behalf. Because as our chapter ends here in Romans chapter 6, for the wages of sin is death. Okay, But the gift of God is eternal life. Our wage for our sin was to be separated and to suffer a spiritual death for eternity. But Jesus Christ, in His mercy and compassion, took on our sin, even though He was without sin. And He took on our punishment, which was that death and that separation. And He suffered that on our behalf. And He died and He overcame the power of sin and death and rose anew in new life victorious, and He offers us free life. And so right now, you might think, my life is messed up. I'm depressed. I'm lost. I'm addicted. I have all these struggles and, pro and problems. I have no hope. I have no purpose. I have no meaning in my life. And I'm here to tell you today that Christ Jesus wants to give you that new life. He wants to give you that new purpose. If you would make Him your treasure, if you would accept Him today, and you would make Him the treasure of your life, that you would not just make a truth claim, but you would desire to please Him and honor Him because of what He has done for you, then my friend, you will not be, you will not be disappointed in the gift that is Jesus Christ. And so if that's you, if everybody would just bow your heads and your hearts with me today, and if that's you, then would you just repeat after me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me. And I thank you for giving your Son, Jesus, on my behalf. And I accept today that gift. But I do not just make a truth claim that, you, that Jesus is, is Lord, or that I confess my sin, or that I'm a Christian. But Father, today I make that truth claim, but I also make you the treasure of my heart as I want to honor and to please you with everything that I say and I do. And so, make yourself real in my life. May, uh, you, would you awaken my conscience and would you awaken my will to do what your good and perfect will is for my life. And above all, would you be glorified in it as I seek to, des as I desire to, to satisfy and to please you and not my own desires. And I thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, UBC, I want to thank you for just taking these 20, 30 minutes and just uh, listening to me as I just uh, break down Romans chapter 6 for you. Thank you once again for this time. And thank you again for your partnership. We look forward to seeing you soon in person. And uh, we thank you and God bless.